everybody. Welcome. I am Mr. Gavin and you are joining me for the third and final part for our three part lesson series for the intro to digital illustration where today we will go and discuss in detail what brushes are and play around with some brushes to create some fur texture. All right. So keep in mind this series is for the iPad. So if you're on the computer or if you're working on an Android tablet, definitely stop the video and go to our other video series where we specifically gear these lessons for those uh, tablets and computer versions, okay? Because the interface looks a little bit different, so we want to keep that in mind, all right? So go ahead and switch over. But if you're in the right spot, let's get started. For our third and final part, we're going to go over brushes, which is a huge library inside Sketchbook. There are so many different brushes, and we only covered maybe about three of them. And today, we'll cover some more so that way you can learn how to make some textures. All right. Now, in the first lesson, you learned how to navigate Sketchbook. Your second lesson, you played around with some layers. Today, we'll focus specifically on brushes. You will need your iPad fully charged and your Apple Pencil or whatever drawing stylus you're used using also fully charged so that way you can make it through this lesson without anything kind of zeroing out on you and dying. Okay, so let's go ahead and learn how to play with some brushes. So we're gonna go over what exactly are brushes. We'll talk about the brush library and we'll use the brushes to, once again, create some fur texture, which I will show you right now. All right, so we're gonna do our best to recreate this. We're not gonna go like exact into detail, you know, we're just going to do what we can and take the brushes and just kind of get the feeling, you know, it's not so much about replicating this exactly the same, we want to capture the feeling of the fur, all right, that we can't really do with like a singular brush stroke, we're going to use some of the more detailed brushes to really capture this movement, all right. Okay, so we're going to get all these little fine areas, the colors, the highlights, they'll be nice and sweet. All right, so let's go ahead, get started. Let me share my iPad. Zoom out a little bit so you see the edges. All righty. So the last brush that we really played with a lot was the fountain pen, right? <clears throat> That's located right here. Now, this is a quick and small amount of brushes that they have selected for you as a nice, like, you can think of these brushes as like appetizers. You know, it kind of introduces you to like the flavor that Sketchbook has in store before you go really and in detail and dive deep into the entire library. So if you take your drawing stylus and you start downwards and then you brush up, you'll notice that there are some more brushes down here. Maybe like five or so, not too many, but there are a couple more. So let's go ahead and do some little swatches of some of these brushes. So. First, I got to change my color to black first. Otherwise, you can't see what I'm doing. And let's go more into some of these more specific brushes down here. So let's select this one called the Synthetic Oil. All right, that's pretty cool. It's like an oiled paintbrush, right? Very nice. OK. And you'll notice that if I sketch over and draw on top, it blends it together. So some of these brushes have the capacity to kind of blend within themselves. Whereas if I reselect my fountain pen, it doesn't have that function, right? But if I go back into the synthetic oil, it starts off nice and dark, but if I don't let go, it's just gonna keep blending. So I have to keep resetting my brush. So it's a really nice way to get cool textures, okay? Or blending options, right? So let's go ahead and select a different brush. How about we select the one right above it, which is a synthetic acrylic. Okay, so we get more of an acrylic paint feeling. Nice. Let's keep moving up right here. Chalk pastel. Wow, look at that. Nice and big. Nice and flat. So what if you've ever wanted to play with a medium in real life, but you never had the chance to, or you thought it was too much work, Sketchbook is a great way for you to kind of play around with these mediums digitally. Because a lot of the times, these brushes are representative of real world um, mediums. 
they try to capture it so that way you get to play with it all in one space instead of you having to go out and search for it or something like that. Now, in order to create fur texture, we actually do need to select a specific or multiple specific brushes to kind of get to where we need to. All right. So let me go ahead and just clear this out. And we're going to go more into detail. So we're going to select this icon right here. And then it's going to open this window. And we're on the settings for this brush. So if I go here, we're going to select library. Now, as you can see, settings is highlighted blue. And if I, as I said before, anything selected in Sketchbook will be highlighted, circled, or denoted in a lighter blue. So we need to go to library. So we're going to select that. And get this large list of brushes. You see how long this is? It'll take us a while to get through everything. But for our learning purposes and for timing, we will quickly go to the brush that we need. OK. So if we go to synthetic paints, some of these brushes will work to our advantage to make hair textures. So right here for our synthetic coarse angular brush, any of these synthetic flat heavies, they all kind of work to create like a hair texture. So let me just quickly select this synthetic coarse angular brush right here. And let me show you. You see that? So if I do a bunch of brush strokes next to each other, they slowly start to resemble hair in a way. So let me zoom in. Pretty neat, right? Now using a brush in Sketchbook isn't like the end all be all, like it has to only be that brush. You are your own artist, so you can choose whatever brush you know benefits you. However, for learning purposes, if you feel more comfortable following along exactly, we'll go ahead and find a brush together. So there is a brush that is specifically geared towards hair. It is located in kind of an obscure area. Sometimes I have trouble finding location. But it does work to our advantage to kind of create a hair texture. So the brush that we are going to use for the hair textures is located in the artist section. And it's literally called hair. This brush is called hair. So if I do a couple of strokes, it's not going to do anything. Okay. So what it does is it creates the hair texture on an existing color area. So let's go back to our shortcuts and let's go ahead and select our primary pencil. And let's just put down like a blotch of color like that. Okay. Then let's go and select our hair brush right here. And if I start inside, and if I brush outwards, you'll notice how it's making almost like a hair texture movement, like so. So some of these brushes don't actually work unless you have colors already placed down. So the hair brush is one of these set brushes, whereas our synthetic paints can put down color on its own, like so. So depending on what we need, we can switch between these brushes so that way we can play around with you know, what works best for our um, take on this hair. But for kind of the starting purposes of this lesson, we're actually not going to use either of those brushes, and we're just going to actually just put down some color. OK, so let's go ahead and clear out our layer. And we're not going to do everything on that picture. We're just going to do like a small little swatch. So that way you can play around and really understand how these brushes work. OK, because those two brushes were working very differently from each other. All right. So let's go ahead and quickly use the fill bucket tool and just kind of fill in our background space with a nice like muted brown color. So I'm in orange right now. I'm just going to shift it over to about right here. Get this like nice muted brown color. I'm just gonna poke. Get this nice muted brown. Okay. All right. 
legs. Go outside of your fill bucket tool. And then shift the brown upwards a little bit. So you get this nice light tan color now. Okay. Go to your primary pencil right here. And we're just gonna put down a couple of swatches. You're kind of gonna use your primary pencil to make hair textures like that. Okay. Just kind of put down a couple of brush strokes here and there like that so you can get the general feel because we're going to use our brushes later to switch these up and give them texture all right so oftentimes when you start and make these art projects if you ever want to make textures digitally you want to just get the general area and the colors and then you'll go back in and make the textures right all right so let's go to our pencil library our brush library and let's go to down to artist and select the hairbrush. Okay. Now, if we start inside and brush outwards to where the color blends with that muted brown, you'll notice how it's starting to become like hair. Okay. So we're gonna do this on some of the edges like so. Let's see how I'm going across the top. And some on the inside. Like so. Okay. So as you can see, we're blending out everything with this hairbrush so that way our brush strokes with our primary pencil feels more like hair. But right now it's all very soft and blended together. So we're going to use a different brush to really have more coarse hair bristles to be more representative of the more finer details. Okay. So we got kind of that going on. Kind of blended out everything. All of our edges has a nice little hairy texture but we need an additional color on top to really pull that forward, all right? So we're gonna go to our colors right here. We're gonna make an even lighter tan, so it's almost white even, like so. We're gonna go to our brush library, and this is where we will select our synthetic paintbrush, our synthetic bristle round. Now, something new, we're going to go more into detail with these brush settings. So after you have this synthetic bristle round selected, go to the settings for this brush. OK. Now, just so we can see, I'm going to change the color to black so that way it shows up right here on the side. It's a little bit hard to see because our brush is going to go down really light. So all these brushes will have different settings. Not all the brushes will have a size and opacity setting. Some of the more advanced and um, specific brushes will have different settings. So it's up to you to go through them, and play around and discover them on your own. But most of them, if not all of them, should have a size setting right here. And this one has a flow and a strength setting. So it's going to show and ask how much of the color you want to go down and how strong you want it to go down like so so it's different from opacity because it has a little bit more specific control as how the colors will appear okay now in addition to a basic option there's also advanced settings all right so i will let you experiment with that on your own but just to introduce it to you advanced settings really lets you play with the size of your brush strokes, depending on when you start and when you end in the flow. You see how it's like changing the shape now? Prior, the brushes would only really change how dark and how big they were. But under advanced settings, you get to change the size, the shape, all the little specifics. And this is like really if you want like a specific need. But for our lesson today, we're not going to go into that. So let's just go back to a basic. And my flow and my strength is pretty low. 
So that way I have more control with each brush stroke. And let's go back in and select the lighter color. Now, since I selected black, I need to find this lighter color, okay? Now, how do we do that? There is a function called the color picker, okay? So instead of manually trying to find this light tan again, there is this icon right here. That almost looks like an eyedrop tool. Okay, so if I select this eyedrop tool, it's gonna make this little crosshair. And if I use my Apple Pencil and I hover over it and I move it around, you'll notice that the ring around starts changing colors. Okay, and this is how we use the color selector. To kind of find a color that already exists and quickly work around and find a color similar, exact, or nearby. So we wanted a lighter version of the tan color. So I'm gonna hover over the tan area and then let go. And now that color is selected. Now with that color selected, I'm just gonna slide it on up so I have a lighter one like so. Okay, very good. Now with our synthetic bristle round, we're gonna take this brush and now we're gonna do little brush strokes inside of those tan areas. And as you can see, with my synthetic bristle round, I'm getting these more fine, coarse hair textures. So it's almost, if not, right now, I'm making details inside of this space. Right, pretty neat. So they're like blending together. They're blending the colors together as well. Just like so. Kind of adding some here and there, blending it on top. Okay. Just like so. And in this kind of tan muted brown space, I'm going to actually make it a darker brown. So I'm going to collect, select my color picker tool, hover over the dark brown, and make an even darker brown color. So I can add in some dark hairs in between. Kind of blend those together. When creating fur and understanding the images that you're referencing from, you really want to capture the movement at which the hair moves on top of how the color changes from the base of the hair bristles to the tips that are exposed in the light. Now we have a little swatch of hair. Pretty neat, right? Okay. Now this is one of many different ways in which we can use these brushes in Sketchbook. So I'm going to open a new layer. I'm going to hide this layer that we previously just worked on. And we're just gonna go around and take a look at some of these other brushes before we end the lesson, all right? So if I go to my advanced brush library, some of the more specific, really intricate brushes that you can explore are like half tones. So there's one with little stars right here. So you can get a pattern of stars, which are pretty cool. Some of these brushes act as patterns, okay? Some make just shapes. So if you have a little anemone, so if I look right there, you see how there's like a bunch of little shapes in there. Maybe that'll be useful if you need to make grass, for example. So you just kind of like draw this at the bottom. You kind of get grass. It almost looks like a little fur too, if you think about it, right? Splatter, like little paint splotches. Okay. little drops, many different kinds of brushes. So on top of just using brushes as like a drawing utensil, you can use the brushes to put down patterns and shapes and objects really easily. And that's for you to explore on your own because these brushes exist for you to fill in whatever artistic needs that you have. But for the purpose of this lesson today, 
we use more advanced and specific brushes to create more complicated textures. We could have gone into this with the primer pencil and like individually made all these brush strokes, but the reason digital illustration exists with its large brush library is for you to kind of have these brushes handy so you can quickly make these um, steps for yourself in a nice, short and simplified manner. All right. Now, so this was a much shorter lesson on brush exploration because a lot of it is just for you to explore on your own. But what this lesson, the purpose of this lesson is to at least dip your toes into the brush library so that way you know kind of exactly how to tackle and begin exploring the brushes for yourself. All right, now with that in mind, that does end our three-part Intro to Digital Illustration lesson series. So thank you for joining us at Museo Art Academy. Once you have finished this three-part Intro to Digital Illustration series, you are ready to transition into the digital illustration class. Now, depending on your age group, whether it's between nine through 12 or teens, you can join either one of those classes depending on your age, and you'll start to make awesome project monthly projects where you can utilize and implement the skills that you learned in these three uh, lessons into those projects moving forward. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Mr. Gavin, so I'll see you next time.